Hello, friends. I'm so happy to be able to be with you, even if it's just by video, to remind you of a story about a man, a warrior, who learned to trust in God for help. Let's have a prayer real quick before we start. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the things that you've given us. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross to forgive us of our sins and, and to bring us into your wonderful kingdom here on earth. Father, we need your help right now. We thank you. We, we ask for your help to keep us safe, to keep us healthy, to keep us growing and learning while we're kind of cooped up in our homes. Father, thank you for protecting us from all the things that are bad around us. And thank you for loving us so much that you want us to be in a relationship with you. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So on Sunday, Miss Donna reminded us that uh, Miss Allison had taught you some motions to remember the story, the cycle of sin and sadness that the Israelites went through. Let's do that together really quick. So the Israelites forgot about God and they lived in sin. This made their lives very hard and they were really, really sad. They cried out to God for help and for rescue. And God sent judges to save them and to lead them. Let's do that again. The Israelites forgot about God and lived in sin. It made their lives very hard and they were very, very sad. They cried out to God for rescue and for help. God sent judges to save them and to lead them. We, the stories of the judges are repeated over and over again, unfortunately. The Israelites would believe in God and worship God for a time and have a good life, and then they would forget about God or turn away from God for some reason, and the cycle would start all over again. They would cry out to God, and God would send a judge to help lead them and to save them. Most of these stories are in the book of Judges. Makes sense, right? in the Old Testament. Let's remember the Old Testament is the first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the five books of the Pentateuch or the books of Moses. After that comes Joshua and Judges. So Judges is the seventh book. It's pretty early in the, in the Old Testament on the left side of your Bible. Turn with me if you have your Bibles to Judges chapter 6, and our story today is going to come from Judges chapter 6 through 8. You can go back and read some of this later on your own. So once again, the Israelite people did not obey God. They forgot to worship God. They forgot to tell their children the story of creation. They forgot to tell their children the story of being rescued from Egypt and from slavery. They forgot that God had brought them into the beautiful promised land. They forgot that God was with them all the time and that God had given them so many blessings. Basically, they became selfish, lazy, and just turned away from God. God didn't like that. And God chose to not protect them from their enemies anymore. So that's where our story gets started today. God had given his people this beautiful promised land, the land of Canaan. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. We remember that from a story previously. They lived on one side of the Jordan River that was beautiful and hilly, very fertile land. There were olives growing and grapes and berries and pomegranates. Lots of crops grew, very rich for food. They could grow their own wheat for flour, and, and everything that they needed was there. The animals lived very well there, cows and sheep and goats, which numerous on the hillsides, and they produced milk and meat for the people. There were lots of chickens, some ducks. There were all kinds of beautiful things and a beautiful life on this side of the Jordan River. On the other side of the Jordan River, however, where the Midianites lived, 
was really just a dry wasteland, a desert. The soil was dry and rocky and sandy. Really nothing grew. It was a, a tumbleweed. That's not very appetizing or very good looking, is it? You can't eat tumbleweeds. And the only animals that liked to live there were camels because, you know, we know that camels can go for a long, long time without any water. So um, the Midianite people didn't build nice houses or comfy homes like the Israelites did. They lived in tents and they moved about from place to place in this desert looking constantly for water and for food. Well, they couldn't plant, raise plant food or raise crops themselves or raise cattle because the land was so bad. So what did they do? They robbed, they raided, and they destroyed the Israelites' food. They would wait until the Israelites had planted everything and everything was ripe and almost ready for harvest. And then they would come swooping in on their camels, hundreds and thousands of Midianites and their camels would come in and just go through the fields and steal all of the food from the Israelite people, load up everything they could on their camels and take it away. They would herd away all the cows and the sheep and goats like bad, evil cowboys on their camels and ride away with all of the Israelites' food and resources. And you know what? What they didn't take, what they couldn't take, they couldn't take all of the food that was growing would destroy and chop down the trees and burn them and leave nothing behind for the Israelites. They were raiding. They were terrible. Judges 6 verse 5 says, They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. They just came to make trouble. Not only did they steal and kill, but they destroyed everything. It kind of reminds me of how the Grinch stole Christmas. You know, the Grinch, he didn't just come and take the Who's presents. He came and took all the decorations and the food and the presents from the Who houses and left not even a crumb for the little Who's mouses. Remember that? That's kind of the way these guys were. They were destructive. The Midianites totally defeated the Israelites, stole their food, terrified them, and broke their hearts. But that's not the end of the story at all. The Israelites, once they had lost everything, several times <laughs> over the course of seven years, they finally started to remember God. Some of them remembered how God had led them into this beautiful promised land. And some of them remembered the stories that had been told that their grandparents had been saved from slavery in Egypt. And a few of them started praying to God and crying out to God for help and for rescue. God heard their prayers and he sent an angel to meet with one of their people named Gideon. And Gideon, the story of Gideon, Miss Donna told you on this past Sunday. If you haven't watched that video, I really encourage you to watch that video. It's really good. She tells the story in a very neat way. She's outdoors in an area that could have been almost exactly like where Gideon was. And she even goes down to a river to drink. So if you haven't seen the video, you need to watch that. Today, we're just going to review that story and um, hit some of the highlights so that you really, really get it into your hearts and into your minds. Okay, let's review the story of Gideon, and we'll use these pictures. Do you remember in the story, the uh, Israelites and Gideon used clay pitchers or jars to cover up their torches so they could sneak up on the uh, Midianite camp at night? Well, that's what these little pictures of pitchers are to represent, to help us to remember that. And that all the facts of the story are, are on each written on a little picture. And they're all scrambled up and I got to put them in order. You can um, do this too at home. I'm uh, going to post a copy of a, a sheet of these little pictures and you can ask your parents to print them out for you and then you can um, cut them out and put them in order and maybe tell the story to someone in your family, your brother or your sister or your parents and get this story in your head and in your hearts. It's really important that we 
that we know God's stories and know the story of the Bible leading up to uh, the wonderful story of Jesus and, and how we're saved through Jesus' love. It's good for us to know all of those stories and to keep them in our hearts so that we don't become like the Israelites and forget about God. First of all, the angel talks to Gideon. So Gideon was just a boy or a young man, and he was working to provide food for his family. He had held back a little bit of the grain, some grain that the Midianites had somehow not stolen. He had it and was grinding it, turning it into flour to make bread for his family. He had to hide and do that down in a hole so the Midianites wouldn't see him and steal that last little bit of food. He was resting under an oak tree and the Lord sent an angel to come and talk to him. And the angel said, Gideon, the Lord has chosen you to save your people, to help rescue your people from the Midianites. And you can imagine how shocking that was. This miraculous meeting um, is in verses uh, 11 through 24 of chapter 6. You can read about that wonderful meeting and, and think about what it would be like to have an angel of the Lord come and talk to you. That same night, Gideon destroyed Baal's altar. So during the night, the Lord appeared to him again, appeared to Gideon again and said, we, God wants you to destroy the altars for the idol Baal. The people of Israel had started worshiping idols, false idols, and had built altars to them. Gideon's own father had built an altar to Baal in their at their home. And so during the night, Gideon went out and he tore down that altar and he built a new altar to the God, to the one true God. And he offered a sacrifice on that. He worshiped God. And this public act of worship was noticed when the people got up the next morning, they saw what Gideon had done and what he was doing. And they were reminded that they were supposed to worship God, the one true God, and not to worship idols. So Gideon's influence was a good influence on his family and his community. You know, people are watching us and they watch what we do. And when we worship God with a great attitude, sometimes other people will want to join in. Always know that people are, are watching you and you can influence people for good. So God made the fleece wet and the ground dry. So Imagine that, that an angel has come and talked to you and then, and then during the night an angel comes and talks to you again and it would be kind of confusing to, to know, is that really an angel or did I have a dream? Am I confused about this? This was serious stuff. And so if he didn't want it, a sign from God, he asked God, can you, will you please give me a sign so that I know for sure that this is your plan and this is your will? And he chose, he said, we, I'm going to put this fleece, which is wool from a, from a sheep or something. He said, I'm going to put this fleece out tonight. And if it's really your will, if this is really you talking to me, I want you to make the fleece wet, soaking wet, and the ground all around it dry. And so God did. When he woke up, when Gideon woke up the next morning, the fleece was very, very wet. It was heavy with water and he had to wring it out and it just filled up a bowl with water. It wasn't just a little bit damp. It was really wet. It was a clear message from God and the land, all, the ground all around it was perfectly dry. Gideon felt like, this is God. God is talking to me. Well, he was about almost 100% sure, but not 100% sure. And so the next night he asked God to give him one more sign. In um, verse 39, sorry about that. In verse 39, he says, God, please don't be angry with me, but just give me one more sign. Let me do one more test with the fleece. This time I'm going to put the fleece out. And if it's dry and the ground around it is wet in the morning, then I will know for sure that this is your will. And so that's what God did. 
he, uh, Gideon laid out the fleece at night. He went to bed. He got up in the morning and the fleece was perfectly dry and the ground around it was all very, very wet. So Gideon knew that truly this was God's will for his life and it was God telling him to lead the Israelites against the Midianite soldiers. You know, God is very patient with us and um, sometimes when we're seeking God's will for our lives, it's okay to, to pray and to ask God to give us signs and God will be patient and kind with us and generous with his, with his love and with his signs and with his assurances so that we will feel more comfortable to be able to do what God's will is. So because of Gideon's influence and reminding the people how much they loved God and that God was with them, 32,000 Israelites volunteered to be soldiers and they came to Gideon and said, we're going to be with you and we're going to fight the Midianites. God said, nope, that is too many. Chapter 7 verse 2 tells us that God said, if the Israelite army was that big and strong, the people would think their own strength had defeated the Midianites and saved them. God told Gideon to send home anyone who was afraid. Well, Soldiers getting ready to go into battle, of course, are going to be afraid. Afraid. 22,000 of the men were afraid, and they were sent home by Gideon. So now there were only 10,000 soldiers left. 10,000 is not very many for an army. If you'll remember in chapter 6, we were told that it was impossible to even count the Midianites and the camels that they had. There were so many, it was impossible to count them. So 10,000 is really not that big of an army, but God said it was still too many. He wanted the Israelites to realize he was saving them from the Midianites, not the soldiers. So he told Gideon to choose another way to choose soldiers. He said, take them all down by the river and watch how they drink. The ones who kneel down all the way on their knees and put their face to the water to sip up the water, those are the ones I want you to send home. And those who go to the water and cup up the water in their hands and <laughs> lap it up like a dog, those are the ones I want you to keep. Well, <clears throat> only 300 people drank that way. So, out of the 32,000 original soldiers that had come, God told Gideon to only keep 300 soldiers to go to battle against these numerous Midianites. Gideon sent 300 men to fight the Midianites. I don't really like the way that says that because Gideon didn't really send the 300 men. Gideon went with them. He led them. He was one of the soldiers, too, that went into battle with the Lord um, against the Midianites. Gideon and his soldiers took pitchers, torches, and trumpets. What? They were going to war and they didn't take any weapons? No, no swords, no knives, no bows and arrows? How could that be? Well, that's because this was a battle that only the Lord was going to win. It wasn't going to be won with guns and tanks and airplanes. It was going to be won by the power of God. So each man was told to take a trumpet, a ram's horn that would go do, 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 and a torch, which is a light a stick with fire on the end of it, and a clay jar or a pitcher to cover up that torch so that the torch would not be shining brightly so that they could be sneaky. They were to go at night and they were to surround the, is the Midianite camp. So the 300 men spread out quietly, sneakily, following God's directions around the camp of the Midianites. Then, on a command from Gideon, they blew their trumpets and broke their jars or pitchers. So suddenly, all of a sudden, at one time, they all went doo, 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 with their horns, and then they crashed their pitchers so that their torches were shining brightly. Imagine that you're in the Midianite camp, and you're asleep, and suddenly there's 
a loud noise, there's horns blowing, and there's crashing sounds, and you look up and there's lights all around you where it had been dark. Now there are fires all around you. You might think that there were thousands of soldiers surrounding you. Loud noises and bright lights coming on in the middle of the night are scary. They're frightening. It's much worse at night than it is during the day. So they were terrified. The army of the Midianites kill each other. When we read in uh, chapter 7, verse 22, that this didn't just happen by coincidence and it didn't just happen because they were scared. The Midianites were, God caused the Midianites, the Lord caused the Midianites to draw their swords upon each other and they killed each other. Basically, they all killed themselves, killed the other soldiers, so the Midianites destroyed themselves. Some of them got away, they ran away, and the Israelite soldiers chased them far across the Jordan River so that they were gone and they never came back. God's small army won because God was with them. There is no way that this happened just because of 300 men with some pitchers and some torches and some horns. This was God's doing. God defeated the Midianites and drove them out of the land so that the Israelites could live in peace and abundance once again. The Israelites were weak and they needed someone to save them. They needed someone strong to save them. Even Gideon was not strong enough to save them. God himself saved the Israelites. We all need someone mighty to save us. Now, we needed someone to save us from our sin. And God sent Jesus to save us from our sin. Only Jesus was strong enough to save us from our sins. We can't save ourselves. We all need someone mighty to save. And God sends his son Jesus to be our savior. We must always remember that and be thankful. Thank you for your time today, and I hope that um, we get to see each other real soon.